What's up, this is Altaric here. So a few things happen when a software company get into making their own hardware. Seamless integration, software and hardware made by the same company means a smoother, more optimized experience. Ecosystem lock-in, a company can roll out features that work only on their hardware, making it a no-brainer to stay locked in in their world. And Apple is a perfect example of that. Zwift Hub 1 is Zwift's latest innovation. Zwift's goal from day one has been to make it super easy to join their platform. And with the new Zwift Hub 1, they are taking it a step further by giving you one, a trainer that is priced at 599 US dollars and includes a full year of Zwift membership. Two, a unique set of features that are exclusive to the Zwift platform. The Zwift Hub 1 comes with the Zwift COG, a one COG component comes pre-installed and allows the trainer to work with almost any 8 to 12 speed bike without the need to switch gears. What does this mean for you? No need to worry about the type of cassette you need, whether your bike is 8 speed or 12 speed. It should fit. This is beautiful because you can also easily switch between bikes. And in my case, I have an 11 speed road bike and a 10 speed triathlon bike. And it's always a headache to switch between these two. Also, no need to worry about calibrating your drivetrain every time you switch between bikes. And virtual shifting is normally only seen on smart bikes, but with the COG, you can get similar shifting experience and much quieter drivetrain operation than shifting across a cassette. It also comes with a Zwift Click. That's another Zwift hardware with plus and minus buttons to initiate virtual shifting. Zwift Click is meant to be mounted on most handlebars, whether it's a road bike, flat, and or a TT handlebars via rubber straps. And if you happen to have the Zwift Play controllers, you should be able to control shifting directly from the Zwift Play rather than the Zwift Click. And personally, I prefer to use the Zwift Play on my road bike, but the Zwift Click is perfect for TT bike setup. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The Zwift Play and Click do not talk directly to the Hub 1 bike trainer. Instead, Everything needs to be paired to the Zwift app, the trainer and the controllers. So Zwift's app is essentially the middleman here in this whole operation. So even though you can use the Zwift Hub 1 or the Zwift Hub Classic with other cycling apps, however, you cannot use Zwift Play or Zwift Click to control shifting if you're using it with a different app. It's fine if you're planning to use it only in erg mode, but if you want to use sim mode, then you are basically limited to one gear if you're using the COG. Communication for virtual shifting is all handled by a new Zwift Bluetooth protocols. However, Zwift intend to make this open to other hardware manufacturers to improve integration with Zwift. So down the line, we might see Wahoo, for example, implement virtual shifting to their trainers along with the Zwift Play or Zwift Click. Now, the Zwift Hub, with a choice of traditional eight to 12 speed cassette, will continue to be sold under the new name, Zwift Hub Classic. Both trainers are priced at 599 US dollars and include one year of Zwift membership. And uh, by the way, you can still use virtual shifting with the Zwift Hub Classic trainer with a traditional cassette as long as you have Zwift Play or Zwift Click. Other than the new virtual cog, the Zwift Hub 1 is the same trainer from last year. Nothing changed. The same 2.5% power accuracy, it measures up to 1800 watts and simulate gradients of up to 16%. The same 10.4 pounds flywheel. And similar to the Hub Classic, the Hub 1 allows you to set up a heart rate bridge using the Zwift Companion app. And essentially, you can pair your heart rate monitor to the Hub, which then broadcasts your heart rate data directly to Zwift. And the best part? You can do all of this within the Zwift Companion app itself. So you see, there is a lot of hardware, software type integration here. And if you happen to have the Zwift Hub Classic, you can easily add the Zwift cog to it by simply removing the cassette hub using the wrench that came with the Zwift Hub. And I believe it's a 17 millimeter wrench, and don't ask me how I know, and simply swap it with the Zwift cog. Very simple process and no need for any special tools. It took me like one minute to do, and uh, you can buy the Zwift cog and click bundle for $79.99 us dollars uh, from the zwift.com once you install the cog lower your bike onto the trainer tighten your quick release score or through axle and turn the pedals 
if you hear any clicking or skipping you might want to shift up or down to align your chain with the drop hog let's talk about virtual shifting the first thing you need to do is pair everything correctly in Zwift's pairing menu, you want to pair the Zwift Hub as controllable trainer and under controls, you need to pair the Zwift controllers or the Zwift click. You can even select all three if you would like to use everything. Once everything is paired, you need to go to the settings menu and under preferences, navigate to virtual shifting and make sure that virtual shifting is enabled. And now you can use virtual shifting with your Zwift Hub. When you are riding, you should see this gear display appear right below your power showing which gear you are on. The Zwift Hub One's got 24 gears at your disposal. To shift, just hit the plus or minus buttons on the Zwift Click. If you are using the Zwift Play, the right side buttons gears you up and the left one gears you down. In my experience, gear switching was really good. It was snappy, no lags. Zwift really nailed it here making it smooth and fast right out of the box. The Hub Auto calculates your bike's gear ratio every time you hop on. And in sim mode, with virtual shifting enabled, the Hub Trainer calibrates your gear ratio right at the start of your ride. If you are using the Zwift cog, it mainly focuses on your front chain ring since the cog is a standard 14 tooth sprocket. Now, if you are using a regular cassette with the Zwift controllers, it will calculate the full gear ratio for you and just a heads up, this gear ratio is set in the first few seconds of the ride. So if you switch gears on your actual bike mid-ride, it's gonna mess with your virtual gears. So it is best to just pick a gear and stick with it for the full ride. Now let's dive into power accuracy. I was able to complete a couple of rides using the new cog. So a long-term review is definitely needed here, but let's get into uh, the fun part and dive into some of the data that I collected. Let's first take a look at this section here toward the end of my test ride. In this section, I was riding along and the hub was measuring power about 10 to 15 watts higher than everyone else. But looking into the sprint section, particularly the last sprint, it was actually pretty good and moving along with the power link pedals and power to max power meters. But let's take a look at the erg mode section. Now in erg mode, the hub smoothes out the power and that's why you see straight lines from the hub versus the other power meters. If we take a look at this first seven minute interval, power was just spot on, really good, no complaints here. And for reference, and this is important to note here, I was using the small chain ring on my bike. Before getting into the next seven minutes, I switched uh, to the big chain ring on my bike. And this is where the hop power measurement started to drift. The hop was measuring about 10 watts higher than my power link power meter. After finishing the interval, I stopped for a bit to let the trainer recalibrate and then continued on the final seven minutes and the results did not change much. The hub measured about nine to 10 watts more in power. Now, this is a similar experience I saw when using a regular cassette and putting it in a big gear. Generally, when in erg mode, the guidance is not to use a big gear with a smart trainer and with the Zwift hub or the Zwift cog being a 14 uh, T sprocket, combining with a big front chain and ring, that makes it a really big gear. And I confirmed this with Zwift and they confirmed flywheel speed will impact the accuracy. And for this reason, they do recommend to not use big gear when in erg mode. So keep it in the small chain ring and it is also quieter in the small chain ring anyway. So naturally this made me question what would happen if I switched to the big chain ring in sim mode? Would I gain some bonus watts? So to test this, I hopped on a tour of Utopia ride and I started the ride riding in the small chain ring. Overall, the accuracy was pretty good. The hop was measuring lower for the most part, but within specs. Then towards the last mile, that's when I decided to switch to the big chain ring to see what happens and see if I can get some bonus power to take on these guys who decided to turn this casual ride into a race. But nothing changed as far as a power measurement. If anything, the hub continued to measure a little lower. So it appears this big chain ring effect is an erg mode only thing. But as far as the trainer response in erg mode, it was flawless. It did everything beautifully, moved between the 20 seconds on and off section without a hitch. It aced the slow cadence section, pedaling between 50 to 60 RPM without a problem. 
and I think it did a beautiful job throughout. So to wrap it up, Zwift maybe did not fully introduce a new trainer here, but what they did here with the Zwift cog is a game changer, not just for Zwift, but for the smart trainer market as a whole. It is a strategic move by Zwift that simplifies the onboarding process and making it much easier for anyone to jump into the Zwift universe without having to worry much about all the technical mumbo jumbo of their bikes and trainers. This is a big deal for a lot of people who might be put off by the complexity of setting up a smart trainer. Then they are tightening their grip on users with their software hardware integration. That is just going to make it a little bit harder for cyclists to stray off into other platforms. So in a nutshell, Zwift isn't just stepping into the hardware ranks since last year. They are coming in swinging and they're making it really hard for anyone to leave Zwift. So there you have it. Feel free to share this video with others in your life and do not forget to tap that like button. And if you're still watching but have not subscribed yet, you know what to do. Thanks again and I'll catch you in the next video.